So welcome to today's session. We're right smack in the middle of Unit 3. And for the next minute or so, I'm going to let you work on these anagrams up here, which I was just describing, means that there are all these letters that if you rearrange them and mix them up, they become math words. They're all words from this unit. So take another 30 seconds or so and see if you can get any, especially number 5. Everybody can get number 5. So let me give you just a minute to work on that. Okay, so did anybody find one? A couple of people in the room found one. Anybody at home find, figure out one? Anybody figure out two of them? No? Okay, I think two was the max in person. So here are the answers in case you're interested. So one turns into scale factor. I told you it's what we're doing this last week. Number two is similar. Number three, dilation, translation, geometry. That's the one I wanted everybody to try. And number six, proportion. So all um, math vocabulary from this unit. So we're going to jump right in. Today we're covering 305 through 307, which is triangle similarity and then the side splitting theorem. We're kind of at a good breaking point, actually, because we're right at the middle of the unit. So we're going to have our week off right in the middle of a unit, which, you know, could be worse. It's not like we're right at the end right before a test or something. So. We're in a good spot. Your week 11 essential question is not part of the notes, so take a quick second and copy it down. Compare and contrast the ideas of similarity and congruence. So let me give you a minute. Give me a green check mark if you are at home watching when you're ready. Okay, so after you have this copied down, I want you to circle two words. Can you circle similarity and circle congruence? So whether you're at home or in person, go ahead and circle both of those for me. So we're circling similarity and congruence. There's a big difference between the two, and that is the big idea of the day. What is the difference between the two? How are they the same? How are they different? So that's what we'll be able to answer by the end of our session. This will obviously be up again at the end, as always, in case you have missed it. So we are going to start right here, except your paper does not have the answer on it. <laughs> it doesn't have the work on it already. So what we're going to practice doing first is finding a missing side using proportions. So last week we talked about how proportions are just fractions, and when I'm finding my fraction, I have to match up the sides of my triangle. So if I pick out A to B on my big triangle, you guys help me out. If I'm highlighting that in yellow, what side should be yellow on my small triangle? E to F should be yellow also. So we're matching up the sides that correspond to each other. So let's stop right there and let's write out what we have so far. So 4.2 is to 1.8. So yellow is to yellow. Big is to small as, let's do a little more highlighting. I'm going to change highlighting colors here to blue. As 5.8 is to M. So let's rewrite the rest of my proportion. As 5.8 is to M. Let's just double check that I did this right first. Big is to little as big is to little. Does that make sense? Yellow is to yellow as green is to green. So you have to make sure that you're following a pattern. Now, Sabella, do you remember how I solve a proportion? Exactly. We're going to cross multiply and work this one out. So let's all try that. Calculators are fine because if you didn't set up your proportion correctly, the calculator is not going to solve it correctly. So I know that you did it correctly just by you getting the right answer. So we're going to say 4.2 times M equals 1.8 times, I should probably put it in parentheses, that way I don't get it mixed up with the decimal there, times 5.8. Everybody okay with that? This is what we did last week. Top times the bottom equals the bottom times the top. So over here, 
I have 4.2m. And on this side, if I multiply 1.8 times 5.8 on your calculator, you could use your cell phone, we would get 10.44. So what's my last step? How do I get m totally by itself? What do I do with the 4.2? Divide. Great job. Divide both sides by 4.2. And if you have a calculator, try it. It's OK to round. For now, we'll round to the hundredths place, which is two decimals, tenths, hundredths, 2.49. So this is the review from last week. Right, let me pause for a second and see if you have any questions. Anybody in the room? Questions? OK, great. So that's last week. And then at the end of last week, we briefly started talking about similarities. So here's what I want you to do. Underline the word that says congruent. A couple units back, we learned about congruent triangles. And there were all of these theorems that prove triangles congruent. I want to see how many you remember. So let me give you about 30 seconds. And on your own paper, can you write down how many you remember? I will start you off with one. Angle side angle was one. See how many more you remember. Um, if you're at home, type them in for me. If you're here in person, I'll ask for some volunteers. You can give me one more. Anybody over there? Edward? Side angle side. Side angle side. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Angle angle is actually not a congruence property. We'll talk about that one in a minute. There's a couple more. Side side side. Side side side. No bad words. <laughs> so angle side side is not one, but angle angle side was OK. So we, we made a big stink about it last time, how no bad words when we write them out. So angle side side doesn't work. But there's one other one. Yep, somebody typed it in the chat box. There's something about a hypotenuse. There is one with two letters. Hypotenuse leg. Yep, exactly. Good job. So those were five. We had five congruence properties when we learned about congruent triangles. Let's write, what does congruent mean? Do you guys remember? Because congruent and similar, they're very different words. Congruent means they are exactly the same. They're exactly the same. So it was this symbol. And what did that symbol mean? They are the same. Make sure that's in your notes. Congruent means they are identical to each other. They are exactly the same, the same size, the same shape, the same angle, the same legs. Everything is the same. So when I say everything's the same, what are we talking about? All the angles are the same, and all the sides are the same. They're the same. Now, how is congruence different than similarity? For something to be similar, look at these two at the bottom. These two are similar. Are they congruent? No, but they're similar. So what makes something similar but not congruent? Hmm. Congruent means same side, same angle. They're exactly the same size. Similar, they don't have to have the same size, but what do we think has to be the same about them? The angles are going to have to be the same, yes. So let's write that down. So to be similar, down here at the bottom, the angles are still going to have to be the same. Now the sides don't have to be the same, but there's something about the sides that still has to be similar. Hmm. They have to be proportional. So the angles are the same. The sides are proportional. You guys hit the nail on the head. That's the difference. So congruent means same sides, same angles. Similar means same angles, 
The sides are not the same, but the sides are proportional. And that's what keeps the shape the same, right? It might be a larger version or a smaller version, but it's still the same shape. Good job, you guys. We are going to have three theorems that are going to help us prove that something is similar. So when we were talking congruent, how many did we have? Five. When we're talking similar, how many theorems are we going to have? Three. We're going to have three. So here are the three that are going to prove that two triangles are similar. The first one is angle-angle. So angle-angle is going to prove that two things are similar. And you guys have this in your notes already. Lucky you. I printed all this off for you. That's why I love it if you're able to print off my notes because I don't want you to spend the whole class copying what I'm doing. I want you to spend it adding to what I'm giving you. So what that means is if I know two angles, like look at this triangle on the left, look at this triangle on the right. One bigger, one smaller. They're not congruent because they're not the same size. Is everybody okay with that? They're not congruent because they're not the same size. But am I allowed to say that they are similar? Yes, I am. Because if I know that two angles are the same, that means I can enlarge it or I can shrink it, and it's going to be the same shape still. Does that make sense, the difference? So congruent means the sides are the same length. That's not what this is. Similar means it's the same shape. They're definitely the same shape. Let me ask you guys a question. If I know two angles, what about the third one? Do you know it or do you not know it? You do know it. So even though they don't write it on there, you still know the third, the third angle. That's why you really only need two to prove it. Could I say angle, angle, angle is a similarity, as, um, would prove similarity? Yes, but what's the minimum you need to prove it? Just two. You only need two, because when you know two, you really do know three. Let's practice how I know this third one, by the way. So if I have a 30 and a 60, we know triangles always have to be what? Perfect. So I would do 180 minus 60 and 30 is 90. So I automatically know that my third missing side is 90. Good job. So, we, yes, question. And, right and it is a right angle, yes. So I could technically draw my box in there. Good point. So we're going to use this theorem to prove later on that things are similar. I also have two other theorems that are going to help us. I have side, side, side. But wait a minute, if the sides are the same, it would be congruent. So let's look at how they phrase this. If the three sides of one triangle are proportional, can everybody highlight that word? So notice it's not saying that the sides are congruent. It's not saying that the sides are the same. It's saying that your sides are proportional. So look at these two shapes now. A big shape, little shape. They're the same shape. But obviously, KL is a lot shorter than HI. That doesn't mean that they're not similar. They're allowed to be similar as long as they're proportional. How do you prove something's proportional? You do like what we did earlier today. You take little leg is to little leg, right? Something is to something as, oops, let me just change my, my highlighter, as one of the shorter ones is to the longer one. That's how you would prove that they're proportional, right? You're setting up fractions. Cross, multiply, solve, whole nine yards, just like we did on our first example today. Yes, so great question in the chat area. The only way shapes can be similar, they have to be proportional. So the sides have to be proportional. Let's go back one slide. So either your angles can be the same, right? Your angles were exactly the same. That proves that they're similar. Or your sides, <laughs> sorry about that, or your sides are proportional. The so angles are the same or sides are proportional. You have two ways to prove similarity so far. Let's talk about our third one. You can also have side angle side. But what about these sides again? Are the sides going to be exactly the same? No. Let's point to the S and the S in our notes. Your sides are going to be Proportional. Proportional is kind of the big idea for similarity. They're going to be proportional. So just make sure you've circled the word proportional really big. 
We're not talking congruence. We're not saying that they're exactly the same. We're saying they are similar. The shape is the same. So if I'm looking at these two triangles down below here, how would I prove that they're proportional? Does anybody have an idea? What would I need to do? Because I see there's a side, there's an angle, there's a side, there's a side, there's an angle, there's a side. I get the side angle side thing, but how are you going to prove that they're similar? How would I set up my proportion? What do we think? 5.4 over 1.8 mm -hmm. equals 4.5 over 1.5. Okay, so in order to actually prove that you can say side angle sides, they're congruent, they're similar, sorry, they're similar, you have to set up your proportion. How would I solve this proportion? Cross multiply. What should happen when I cross multiply? They should be equal to each other. They should be equal to each other. So, Sabella, can you multiply 5.4 times 1.5 for me? What did you get? 8.1. And guess what happens when I multiply 1.8 times 4.5? I'm going to get 8.1. So yes, they are proportional to each other. So you would be able to say yes, by side angle side, they are proportion. They are similar. How did you know that they were similar for sure? You set up the proportion and you make sure that they are equal to each other. So we have three new theorems that we can use for similarity. I'm going to put up a new page real fast. I'm going to recap this again at the end, but let's recap real fast. Oops, that was my eraser. What are my three theorems to prove similarity? It was side, side, side. What's my other one? Side, angle, side. What was my last one? Angle, angle. Good job. And what are these three theorems for? Similarity. Good job. I'm going to come back to these later. I want to make sure we know them off the top of our head. So we have three new theorems to prove similarity, and they're right here on our screen. So now let's try some homework questions. Are we ready? Because it's one thing to see an example or two, but it's another to be given a homework problem. So here we go. Example two says, determine whether each triangle is similar to triangle RST. And then here's the biggie. Explain why or why not. So you can't just say no, you can't just say yes, you have to say why, how do you know? So let's look at RST so far. I know I have an 80, I know I have a 40. Now if they've given me two angles, do I know my third? Yes is the answer. So we need to find that third. Can you guys all find that on your paper and fill in your third angle up here? All right, what did we get for our third angle? 60. Guys at home, you okay? Did we get 60? 80 and 40 is 120. So 180 minus 120 left me a remainder of 60. Why did I need to find that third angle? Here's why. Because when I come down here, they gave me 80. Great, I had an 80. So, so far, so good, right? I have one angle the same. But wait a minute, the other angle they gave me was 50. How do I know if I have a 50 up here unless I find it? So the question becomes, I, ha I show an 80 and a 50. Do I have an 80 and a 50 up top or no? Is there an 80 and a 50 in my top triangle or not? No. So letter A would be no. Why not? Because two angles are not the same. Is everybody okay with that? There's two, two angles are not the same. And there's not any special math language to use. You guys can just write a regular sentence using words. So why is A not similar to my triangle up above? Because they did not have two angles that were the same. And that's one of my rules, right? Angle, angle is my rule. Remember my rules, angle, angle, side, 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 angle, side. So if you look at all of these examples, do they tell us any of the sides on any of my examples? No, they don't tell us the sides at all. So I'm never going to be able to use side, 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 and I can't use side, angle, side. So the only option I have for this example would be angle, angle, and seeing if that works. Let's come down to B. 
I have a 60 and a 40. Do you have a 60 and a 40 in our top triangle? In our first example? Yes, I do. So I get to say, yes, angle, angle. Why? Because two angles were the same. And instead of saying the same, let's get fancy. What math symbol can I put there? I could say, ooh, better than equals. Congruent. congruent. Let's use our congruent symbol. So yes, by angle, angle, because two angles were congruent. So here's the thing on B. You guys ready for this? Watch. B had the 40, just like my top one had the 40. But B also had a 60. If I didn't go in and add in that top angle, I would have missed that fact that, hey, there's a 60 here, and there's really a 60 up there, too. Do you see what I mean? You would have missed that. You could have said no, because you didn't originally see the 60. So it's really important that you guys fill in all the angles that you know. Now we're going to come to C. C shows a 40 and an 80. Does my original problem have a 40 and an 80? Yes. So I can say yes. Angle, angle. Why? Because two angles are congruent. It's the same answer, the same reasoning as in B. And that's fine. Because we know triangles really have three angles, right? So I'm allowed to say two are the same for B and two are the same for C. That's fine. Same justification. What do we think about D? Okay, so one person has said there's not enough information. Does anybody have another opinion? Do we agree? Okay, we agree. There's not enough information. Right, so D would be no. Why not? Not enough info. Great job. So how did these four go? Does anybody have a question on any of these four that are up there? Because there will be quiz questions just like this. And you better believe that they're only going to give you two angles because they know that you are able to find the third one. Make sure you do find the third one. So let's try another example. This time it says, what is the theorem that allows us to state that triangle DEF, what's that weird squiggle? What does that mean? Similar. So that my first triangle is similar to my second triangle. Let's refresh our memory about my three theorems that prove similarity. Angle, angle, side, 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 angle, side. Okay, so let me ask you, how many angles are shown on each triangle? Just one. So it's not going to be angle, angle, because they don't give you two angles. Everybody okay with me crossing that one off? It cannot be A, because for A, you need to know two angles. They only gave me one. So now the question is, is it going to be side, 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 or side, angle, side, and how do I know? Look what else they gave me. They are telling me DE is proportional to GH. That's what a fraction means. A fraction, you can add in that word proportional. So DE is proportional to GH. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to highlight them in the same color. DE is proportional to GH. And I know you may not have a highlighter, so can you guys maybe make like a squiggle line on top of that, meaning like this? Can you do a squiggle right here and a, oops, and a squiggle right here with your pencil? And then we're going to do the other one. So then the other one says that DF is proportional to GJ. So DF to GJ. So let's do a different kind of a a squiggle, I don't know, like lines or something would work. Circles, yeah, whatever you want to do. I love colors. If you have colors, use colors. But if not, we make do. Take a look at what you have. Do we have three sides, side, side, side? Or do we have side, angle, side? We have side, angle, side, and it became really obvious after we marked up our paper. Marking up the text, right, avid style. Marking it up. We can see it. A side is touching the angle, it's touching the side. Side is touching the angle, it's touching the side. So this would be side, angle, side. So whenever I get a test question, what I do is I write down my three options, right? You only have three options. 
cross off any that for sure are not going to work from the get-go, and then ask yourself about the remaining ones that you have left over. That is my best piece of advice to you guys. Any questions on example three? You guys are doing great so far. Okay, now this slide, I have added extra stuff to it that's not on your slide, so I want you to add it in, please. What you guys are going to add in is this little bubble right here and our three congruence properties. So let me give you a moment to copy that down. Please add that to your notes. So now that you've written it, let's read it together. It says, if all corresponding angles are congruent, remember, angles have to be the same, right? Angles are congruent, and if the sides are proportional, so angles are the same, sides are proportional, then we can say that they are similar, and we can find that scale factor that we talked about. If those things are all true, we can use these three similar similarity theorems to prove that triangles are similar. So it's just like a recap page of what we had just done. You guys did great. We have one more thing to cover today, and that is the side splitting theorem. And I know that sometimes when we see these in our text or on the online slides, it's a little intimidating because they don't use numbers at first. Have you noticed that? They like to use a lot of letters because what they're doing is they're making it really general. They're making it work for any triangle no matter what numbers I put in there. So let's kind of see if we can figure this out. It says a line parallel to one side of a triangle divides the other two sides proportionally. Okay, what does that mean? It means I have two parallel lines and that's going to make my sides proportional. So watch what they're doing. They're saying if you have two parallel lines, watch how I can set up the problem. I can say that A to C um, matches up, well, I'm going to do little is to big as little is to big. So let's see. Little is to big. I should have used a different color. I can make this side yellow. As little is to big. So I'm going to show you an example in a minute, but what they're doing is they're just making two fractions. They're doing the little portion on top, big portion on the bottom. Little portion on top, big portion on the bottom. Little is to big as little is to big. Not too bad. When can we use that? Proportion, when I have what? What do those two lines mean? When you have parallel lines. Okay, so let's try. How do I know that I have parallel lines here, you guys? What are they showing me on my picture? The arrows. Yep, the arrows mean parallel. So I want us to set up our proportions, and we're going to do it together. So I start off with two empty fractions. I have a fraction here equaling a fraction here. I need to say little is to big as little is to big. So let's start on the left side of my triangle. Little is to big. Little would be the two is to big. What's the big on that side? 4.5. Good job. As now when I go to my other side, I have to start the same way I did before. Little 4 is to big. X. So let's talk. There's more than one way to set this one up. But let's just make sure that this first way made sense. Little side is to big side. Little side is to big side. Do you guys see how I started at the same spot, right? 2 is to 4.5 as 4 is to X. Can somebody think of another way that I could set this up that would still be correct? What if I was thinking a different way? Someone want to try? Okay. Yep. So we can do it. We can actually do it upside down as well. So 4.5 is to 2 as x is to 4. I want you to think about why these are the same. Big is to small as big is to small. These are both correct. Think about what we're going to do to solve these. We're going to do what? Cross multiply. When I cross multiply, it doesn't matter which one's on the top or the bottom. 
because they're going to get multiplied. They're going to work. The key is that you have both of the littles on top or both of the little portions on the bottom. Do you guys see what I did there? You, they have to correspond to each other. So as long as you set it up the same way on both sides, you're going to get the right answer. So let's try and cross multiply here. So I would get 2 times x. No matter which way you do it, you're getting 2 times x. And the other direction, you're going to get 4.5 times 4. Uh, what's 4.5 times 4? 80? Yeah. 2x equals 80, so what does x equal? Did I do that right? No, 8. 8. I'm missing my decimal place. Ms. Keith Brick. There. <laughs> so x equals, no, not 80. 18. Wow. It's the day before break. My mind is ready for break. So we get 18. <laughs> and 18 divided by 2 would be 9. So your x is a 9. So as we move forward with these problems, please know there's more than one correct way to set them up. But again, the key is, are you matching up the same size? So if you started big on the top of your fraction, you have to start big on the other side of your fraction. I do want to show you one last way that is also correct to set this up, and I'm not trying to confuse you by any means. We're just going to be using this on the next example. You can also say this, a part is to the whole, so 4.5 is to 4.5 plus the 2. Okay, so watch, stop and look what I did. A part is to the whole side, everybody okay? As the part, as the part is to the whole. That would also get you the same answer. Is that more complicated on this one? Yes, it is. It's not always going to be, though. Okay, so the key, the key, again, is just matching up the pieces. As long as you're doing it the same on both sides, you're going to get the same answer. So let's try again. Oh, that's the answer. Okay, here. I want you to see how you would like to set up this problem. Go ahead and try on your paper. There's more than one right way to do it. Nope, you're not. Just try. You're setting up two fractions. Okay, who would like to give me how they set up their proportion? And again, there's more than one right answer. Daniel, what were you thinking? Just try. Yes, equals. Perfect. So that's one way to do it. Did anybody do it the other way? Yeah. Okay, what did you do, Destiny? 10 over 8. X over 6. Perfect. They're both correct. Let's cross multiply and solve. So we got 60 equals 8x. Everybody good? Same answer. Divide by 8, divide by 8. This one's going to be a decimal, right? 7.5? 7.5. All right, Adrian, did you set yours up a different way? Yeah. Okay, what did you do? Okay, look what he did. 10 over x is 8 equals 8 over 6. Does he get the same answer that we do? Yes, he does. So there are plenty of ways to get the same answer with these problems. Consistency is the key. So when you are able to visualize the problem and you do it your way, yeah, so like Daniel has his way, Destiny has her way. When you find a way that you like, stick with it. It's fine. Okay? Last question, because you know, okay, sh you guys know that they love homework questions like this, where they don't give it to you as a triangle. They give it to you with all of these kind of funky parallel lines and stuff going on. So let me give you a moment to label everything. Can you take this information they gave you and mark up your text? Mark up my example. Let me give you a moment. So we're adding in what we know. 
Then we're trying to make our two fractions. So I'm going to write in what I know. Okay, look how I labeled mine and see if that makes sense for you. SU was 3, so this little section is 3. SW is 12, so that whole section is 12. Little is to the whole. See what they're doing this time? Then on the other side, they're saying find TV. Well, I don't know TV, so I'm going to make that my variable. I'm going to call it X. But they do tell us that T to X is 16. So this time, they don't give you little, big, little, big. What are they giving us? Part to the whole, part to the whole. So can somebody tell me how they set up their fraction? Who wants to give it to me? Okay, so 3 over 12, x over 16. Let's make sure that works. She's right. I just want to talk you through it. So little or part is to the whole thing as the part is to the whole thing. Good job. Anybody set it up differently? Always more than one right way. These could be flipped upside down. Same answer. So let's cross multiply, see what we get. So 3 times 16, 48, equals 12 times x. So x would be, oh, 4. 4. Nope, there's no rounding. 48 divided by 12 is 4. Watch. <laughs> Okay, watch that it makes sense. How do you go from 3 to 12 times by 4? How do you go from 4 to 16 times by 4? So they are proportional to each other. Okay. So when you get here, 48x, 48 equals 12x, you just divide by 12. So x is 4. All right, that's our last example for today. This is what your quizzes are like all the way up through Friday. And just a reminder about what your essential question is. You're going to compare and contrast the ideas of similarity and congruence. Please use three sentences. That would be awesome. Thanks, guys. I hope you have a fantastic spring break and put this in the week 11 drop-off.